Hi hey everyone and welcome back to another Borkino game video. Today's video is dedicated to Crunchyroll by Psy Games Giveaways. Absolutely killing it with this stuff. 3500 jewels, you can see it in your box. And not to mention Yukari's OP shield that will help you out with Minotaur. Let's go ahead and talk about a few things, alright? And some lap 2 difficulties and explanations on why lap 2 is so difficult for clan battle. Just some tips and stuff, right? So you can see here on Twitter, we got 3500 jewels thanks to 2 million downloads. Absolutely amazing that Pristis can Connect is absolutely killing it on overall global launch and not to mention the login bonus that's currently occurring from March 4th through March 14th we're getting 10 gotcha tickets which is a technical 1500 jewel equivalent each summon is technically amount of jewels and yes you can save these gotcha tickets 300 stamina and 800,000 mana I'm gonna keep repeating these things just because of the fact I'm so happy we are getting these fantastic giveaways and I like to see giveaways because it just means the game is healthy at its current state and if the company can give away currency that means they're confident with their product right so let's go ahead and show you what yukari's op shield does so you can see here minotaur actually has a magic damage attack which is his paralyzed and the reason why that's so important is because if you run yukari you can actually block that paralyzed thanks to her shield right here on her union burst. All right, let's go ahead and show you what that's going to be looking like. Minotaur has a stun at 54 seconds, at 36 seconds, and at 18 seconds or 16 seconds, all right? So what does that mean? If you can cast Yukari's shield at the 56 second mark, then you will block the stun at the 54 second mark. Now, I'm not going to provide like timings like crazy like that. So you can see here, 55 seconds, the stun does not occur, and that's going to be absolutely phenomenal so we can keep our Yukari alive or keep all of our units prevented from being paralyzed, but also, most importantly, keep Kauri alive because Kauri is very prone to damage in this section in particular. So you can see here, everything is going well. The next part that I pretty much have to showcase and get right is getting Yukari to 18 seconds. When that 18 second mark occurs, that's when, oh, there it is, 17 seconds, this is really close. 16 seconds right there, you saw the howl. And these are like the little things, Kauri dies, that's unfortunate but you, you master that over time by getting the proper timings. But you can see there that we did not get paralyzed, all right? You'll know that you get paralyzed if you get like the little yellow lightning bolts. And we'll go ahead and run it one more time just to show you what happens if you don't use Yukari's shields whatsoever. Of course, folks will die, but I wanna show most of all the timings of when Minotaur actually casts those paralyzes, all right? Paralyze is different from stuns. They both don't move but I believe the Paralyze is, a, there it is. That's the first Paralyze right there at technically one minute and 11 seconds, but you can't block that one because Yukari Shield pretty much cannot come up. And then we're just gonna go ahead and pretend. See right there, we got pretty much Paralyzed, right? So we're gonna cast Yukari Shield here just to waste it for the sake of it. And if we can get it right, if you, you know, time the shield, we might be able to block the 36 second one, but I highly doubt it. So we're here at the 40 second mark, 36, 36 seconds. We did block the stun, you can see there, or paralyzed, no one got paralyzed. So Kauri is dead. That's what happens if you don't use the Yukari shield appropriately. And then now at the 16 second mark, we're gonna pretty much get paralyzed again right here there you go there's the paralysis and everything so you have to time it appropriately so you can keep all of your units alive that way you know what's going on it's these like situational awareness when to time certain skills that will help differentiate your clan and i hope that i can help you against enraged minotaur learn this like literally today after just watching this now some of you are wondering why does that shield not work on the stun or the knockback where he pretty much bullhorns your tank or whoever at the front section and that's going to be because it deals physical damage in particular so if if you actually go here into home and then you go into clan battle, Orc has a stun on one of his skills and it's physical damage related. So if you bring Shizuru, you can block those stuns in order to keep your units casting their UBs appropriately. Feel free to check it out. I wish I could show you, but I don't have Shizuru to pretty much showcase that. But shields are going to be a very, very important factor. And we'll talk about it again in another video. We'll have an own like video just talking about shields and how they work. 
but this is something that's going to be very very important in order to use Yukari's OP shields and Shizu's OP shields in future units that will have shields and why shields are going to be so important. So if you go into the help section right here and then you go into battles and then you scroll down to where status effects and special effects and then you scroll down to barriers no barriers is what you're going to be looking for where it prevents damage from the specified attack type whether that's physical or magical or a physical neural barrier or a physical slash magical barrier there are absorption barriers where it pretty much restores hp that does actually still block the stun so long as it's related to a particular type of damage so for example june right here can actually block the orcs stun because of the fact that her shield is physical damage based technically it can also block the minotaur's magic damage but you know it's up to you whether you want to use it that way yukari's shield is just better because it applies to all units available on her union burst but this is just something that i want folks to be aware of now let's go ahead and talk about the lap 2 details and why it's going to be so difficult all right so let's go ahead and talk about lap 2 so as you can see here on march 7th there is supposed to be clown battle 2 but also rank increase to level 88 now rank increase to level 88 isn't that big of a difference and you know it's not something that free to play players can all achieve it's not even something all players can achieve because it occurs during clan battle what i'm trying to say here is that if we have sped up content we need to have sped up releases of like chapters and stuff so we can tackle the content appropriately. If chapter 10 released with the current clan battle, then we would be able to tackle the content that we have currently. Now note here that it was actually said that they wanted to release chapter 10 on April 1st, but if you actually go over here and you scroll down, they're actually releasing chapter 10 and level 88 on March 15th, which is actually pretty good. At the end of the day, I feel like they are very aware that lap two is difficult, but they wanted to see how the community would handle it. And that's why it's called clan battle beta. So my message with all of this is if we're going to have difficult clan battles or more clan battles with difficult bosses, then they need to give us the content like chapter 10, so on and so forth, so we can handle these bosses appropriately. By that, if we had chapter 10 released, we would have Nozomi at rank 8-5. So what do I mean by that? She'll be rank 8 for Mitsuki in the example in this particular situation. And then she will have these three gear pieces and then these two gear pieces. Because these two gear pieces will unlock when chapter 10 releases. Those are like the big details that we need in order to tackle content appropriately. It's not really about the fact that we get like player level 88. It's more along the lines we get higher ranks because higher ranks matter a lot because they give us higher base stats and then the gear that we acquire from that rank up will be a slightly bit better to hopefully improve the character and then we'll talk about which characters are going to be good to increase to rank 8-5 in the future all right all right let's go ahead and show what an older event is going to be looking like or an expiring event so you can see here this is the hatsune event and you can't tackle any of the bosses even if you have tickets and stuff it pretty much just sits here but if you actually go into the metal gacha, if you have some metals left, you can still use them. So let's go ahead and use the last bit of our metals, see what we get, and there we go. That's going to be it. It's going to be just a nice factor that you can do in case you want to just expend a bunch of tickets for the event. And then you want to hold off on spending the metals because, you know, if you spend the metals during the actual expenditure of tickets it's going to hurt your overall progress to get more medals right so it's just something to take into account in case you're bum rushing all of your tickets at the very last day of an event let's go ahead and do some pvp as we always do just for the funsies and see what's going on everyone is going to be very meta as of late but what's interesting is i've been seeing a lot of off meta teams work in enraged minotaur so it's been very interesting like experiencing lap 2 at its current level because it forces you to build tanks it forces you to run healers that's like my favorite part about losing in minotaur right now is i'm using units that i wouldn't think to use like for example i'm using yui in some situations or i'm using chica in some situations and i'm using yukari in most situations you would never use those healers or you would never try to bring a tank like miyako every single time during lap two 
but it's been greatly helpful to bring those units so I don't instantly die and hopefully I can deal 200k damage which is something that I thought I would never have to do during a clan battle but it's very important it's like you're using a different part of your team members in order to tackle clan battle it's more like you're tackling an event versus an actual like boss rush right which is why I think lap 2 is so interesting right now as painful and as difficult it is all right this is going to be a very close match from what I can tell I don't think we can take this down we just need to take out this Tamaki it might be very hard all right Akari is going to do some buffs but no one is going to be around that's all right but let's go ahead and see if Monica can get the kill come on Monica Monica please Monica please all right Maho oh we got the Nozomi kill yep we are good very very nice i think this one was just a matter of some stars versus just levels and stuff because everyone is like level 85 soft launch bracket it is absolutely terrifying to be in overall my thoughts on like everything giveaways are absolutely amazing i think crunchyroll buy side games they're doing a great job making this game much better than it already is and then also with lap 2 i feel like there's just some improvements but it allows us to use off meta like characters for clan battle such as yukari and chica and all those other healers and tanks that normally you wouldn't use so it's just something nice to experience in order to deal more experimentation and in some ways it's sort of refreshing anyways if you made it this far consider subscribing dropping a like leaving a comment follow me on twitch follow me on twitter 17,500 subs we'll be doing a giveaway thanks so much for watching and i will see you in the next one